the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's love. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 219, Jeremiah 51-52 The king dragged to Babylon in chains. God of mercy and love proceeded his great and wonderful plan for salvation through judgment against the people of Israel and through restoration for the remaining people. First point, God proclaimed that although Babylon would fall, South Judah would be restored. God declared judgment on Babylon through Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 51, the record of how God would use Persia as his tool to strike Babylon can be found. As such, God had his plans to judge Babylon. But South Judah was to receive God's salvation. As God had trained the Exodus generation in the desert for 40 years, he once again trained his people for 70 years. But the people of South Judah, who did not realize this, feared for their lives. All the surrounding countries of Babylon feared their growing power, but they did not know that God was planning the fall of Babylon. The people of South Judah were to have hope and to look forward to the day when God would restore them. Therefore, Jeremiah told the people who were taken to Babylon as captives to not be shaken in any situation and to always have a hope of returning to Jerusalem when the time came. Second point, within God's management of the world, Babylon was to go on for 70 years. Even if the Babylon castle seemed indestructible, God's ending towards them was already decided. Jeremiah had written on a scroll about all the disasters that would come upon Babylon, all that had been recorded concerning Babylon. He said to Sarah, when you get to Babylon, see that you read all these words aloud. Then say, Lord, you have said you will destroy this place, so that neither people nor animals will live in it, it will be desolate forever. When God had told Jeremiah about the fall of Babylon, Babylon was at the height of its dominance. They had already taken their first and second group of captives from South Judah. During that time, King Zedekiah went to visit Babylon. Jeremiah asked Sarah, who was to go with Zedekiah, to tell the first and second group of captives to deliver God's message. The first was for the first and second group of captives to read and proclaim the record of Babylon's judgment and fall. Second, after reading it, they were to throw the scroll into the Euphrates River with a stone tied around it so that Babylon would sink and rise no more. With this message, God's word through Jeremiah came to a cross. Third point, the last king of South Judah, Zedekiah, had his two eyes gouged out and then was dragged in chains to Babylon. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 11 years. Unfortunately, Zedekiah was evil in the eyes of God. 2 Kings chapter 25 and Jeremiah chapter 39 both record the scene of Jerusalem falling. The Babylon Empire gave warnings to Jerusalem during sins. Normally, the warning was that if they surrendered, their lives would be spared. But the warning of the Babylonian Empire was that if they did not surrender, everything would be bound down and all that remained would turn to ashes. Babylon had already attacked for the past 18 months, and those 18 months 
were very difficult to endure. The Babylonian soldiers had made sure that no food could be taken into Jerusalem, and so life within Jerusalem was becoming more and more unendurable. Despite this, Zedekiah did not surrender for 18 months. Because of this, in 586 BC, Jerusalem received no mercy from Babylon and it was raided, attacked, and burned down like no other. All of Jerusalem became destroyed and only a portion of the vineyard was kept, and the majority of the people were taken as captives. The end for Zedekiah was also dreadful. In ancient records, it is common to see the punishment of the eyes of kings being gouged out. Zedekiah had his two eyes gouged out, and he had to live in the Babylonian prison for the remainder of his life. He was 32 years old at the time, which meant that his two sons would have been very young. The last thing Zedekiah saw with his eyes were his two sons being killed. We can imagine how bad the people of South Judah were treated seeing how their king was treated. Fourth point, Babylon raided the Jerusalem temple and then burned it down. The record of Jerusalem's state after being burned down by Babylon was clearly documented. With the fall of Jerusalem, the Jerusalem temple also suffered immensely. The Babylonians took all the articles in the Jerusalem temple. The Babylonian soldiers who waited to attack for 18 months were permitted to take their spoils. The soldiers were able to take their spoils to their heart's desire as they were unable to go home for the past 18 months. Soldiers raided Jerusalem, burned down all the buildings, killed the men, and raped the women. Indeed, Jerusalem had never looked worse. Jeremiah had persuaded, warned, and pleaded to surrender to Babylon so that this would not happen. Different to Zedekiah, Jehoiachin, who was taken during the second round of captivity, became a free man after years in Babylon. Babes point, Jeremiah experienced the suffering with his whole heart and body. To look back on the life of Jeremiah, first, he was from Anathoth. Second, he was beaten by priest Pasha and thrown into a pit. Third, he was almost killed by the people and the other prophets. Fourth, he was mocked by the false prophets Hananiah. Fifth, Jehoiakim burned the scroll written by Jeremiah and threatened him. Sixth, he was arrested for treason and thrown into a mud pit twice and almost killed. Seventh, he was dragged to Egypt. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tong Doc Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does. The way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation. One story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tom Doc Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God, enables God to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life. 
365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel the healing that comes from mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app. 